the Lord said to me that August is a month of signs and wonders. You, you know what that means? It's a month of miracles. It's a month of God's approval. It's a month of God's confirmation. That's what it is. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Glory to God. Signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Glory. Signs and wonders. That's what all this is. You are going to see miracles. Miracles that are the exclusives of God. Miracles that only God can perform. Miracles in every area of the life. Miracles. And then the Lord said to me, He said, not only will you see miracles, I will use you for miracles. So I will do miracles for you and I will use you to do miracles. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. By the law of balance. It's hard to maintain a steadfast faith while you also have faith on your inside. So what happens to you is that you find you vacillating. Today you have so much faith. Tomorrow you are afraid. It does happen. But you see, that's not um, the ideal kind of Christian life God wants for you. That's not what God wants for you. Even though it does happen, doesn't mean that's what God wants. That's not God's recommendation. Let's not confuse what, what is for what ought to. I'm sure you understand that. Hallelujah. So let's quickly get through to it because you say, why is this important? My goodness. You, you have to learn to deal with your fears. You have to be aware of it first because there are people who are not even who, who are not aware that they are really afraid. They can't tell why they are. They just know that things are not happening. They can't tell why. You see, fear. There are people who are who are dealing with torment. They're dealing with, with ment mental torture. Some of them are, are psychological, some have become um, demonic cases. Mental torture. You are just, you are just tortured. You have become schizophrenic. You, 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 are not, you are not okay any longer. You are dealing with some mental issues. And you have to understand that mental touches of the devil. They may give it a psychological name. That name is a demon's name. It's demonic. Mental touch is not of God. And you know, it says, it says fear has torment. Fear has torment. That means fear will torture you, will torment you. There are people who are constantly tormented in their, on their inside and they can't explain why. They say, I just, I, I know I'm, I'm dealing with torment on my inside. I, I, I'm dealing with mental torture. They can't explain it. It's a demon of fear. It's a demon of fear. And, and if you are if you're participating in this meeting right now, and you're dealing with fear, you're dealing with torment, you're dealing with torture. I command you evil spirit of torment. You spirit of fear, I command you. With every authority given to Jesus, I command you to leave that individual alone right now. I command you to go from her, go from him, go from that family. I command you to go and never return again in the name of Jesus Christ. And even if you have uh, a justification for that work, first said the Lord, even the captive. Of the mighty shall be taken away. The lawful captive shall be delivered. Yes, that captive may be lawful. But right now, I command an end to that torment. I command an end to that torture. And I ask to leave. Leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave now. Be gone forever. Return no more. In the name of Jesus, 
I want to just shake yourself off. Shake it off. There's no fear in me. There's no torment, no place for torture, no place for the devil in my life. I'm free, I'm free in Jesus' name. Amen. Just watch what your life becomes from this point. Just watch, you're going to find you just functioning very bold, walking bold, walking bold, because that's what God has just done for you. That evil spirit has just left you and will not return again. Your heart is filled with boldness, with courage, with the confidence of the Lord. From this day, the Lord has become your confidence and shall not suffer thy foot to be moved. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go quickly. Verse 25, book of Proverbs. Let's run now. Proverbs chapter 3. See to it that you are following with me. Okay, you are flowing along. It's important you flow along. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 25. Be not afraid. Now, you, you see what God is telling you? God is saying, don't entertain it. Be not afraid of sudden fear. When it cometh, be not. So fear comes to make you afraid. So he says, be not afraid of it. So what is sudden fear? It is that inexplicable anxiety that you feel, you experience. Where you, you just find that you are, you, you are unnecessarily anxious. They call it panic attack or something. You, you just are panicking. It's sudden fear. But you see what God says? He said, be not afraid of it. So what do you do? God has said, be not afraid of it. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. So firstly, now you are aware of what is most for that feeling. It's sudden fear. It comes. It's an attack. God says, be not afraid. Why? Give you reasons why you should not be afraid of it. Number one, because Jesus has given us his peace. Number one, Jesus gives us his peace that surpasses human comprehension. That's the number one reason why you should not be afraid. Why you should not, you should not entertain fear. That's number one reason. Number two, because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Number three, because God has given us the spirit of boldness. Number four, because it's not of God. You see that? So uh, let's quickly, let's quickly um, corroborate all of those um, reasons with, with scriptures quickly. So number one, because um, Jesus has given us his peace, right? Let's look at it quickly. You can write them down. Number one, the, number one reason, right? Jesus has given us his peace, right? Okay, Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7, and John 14, verse 27, write it down. Number two, because God has not given us spirit of fear, right? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse, chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Number three, number three, God has given us spirit of boldness, okay? Good. I'll give you that in a moment. Para basta. Mm 
God has no spirit of boldness. Number three, God has no spirit of boldness. That's Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, verse 1. Number four, because not of God. James chapter 1, verse 17. Just make sure you have the scripture. Number one, put Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and John 14, 27. Uh, reason why you should not fear. Number two, 7, verse 1, verse 7. Reason number three, Proverbs 28, verse 1. And reason number four, James chapter 1, verse 17. And John chapter 3, verse... Let me get that for you quickly. John 3, 27. Put that down. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. There's no fear in me. No place for fear in me. I'm as bold as my father. Bold as my father. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 4, quickly, let's just glide through. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. King James says, be, be careful for nothing. The actual word there is be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind through Christ. Beautiful, beautiful. But I think we should just look at something quickly, something that will be more interesting than that. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. I, I like that. The Lord taught me something about that many years ago. Be anxious for nothing. I want to read the NIV for you quickly. It says, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer, and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Look at the outcome of that life. So that when you, when you become anxious, speak in other tongues. Never forget that. When you find yourself becoming anxious, speak in other tongues. Because remember, when you speak in other tongues, you, you embolden yourself. That's a secret you don't forget. Paul says, he who speaks in an unknown, an unknown tongue edifies himself. Edifies, emboldens himself. First Corinthians chapter 14. Remember that? Emboldens himself. He that speaks an unknown tongue emboldens himself. So never forget to speak in another tongue when you, are, when you are afraid. He says in, in verse 4, don't forget that. First Corinthians 14, 4. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. That means embodies, charges himself, cast out fear. Hallelujah, glory. Fear. You, you, you find you are somewhere you are afraid. Don't, don't start. Don't think about why you are afraid. What is the reason for the fear? How did the fear come? Don't worry about all that. Just begin to speak in other tongues right there. And, and as long as you are still afraid, don't stop speaking in tongues. Because many times 
you know, you just, you just say, ah, reverence, you just go one hour, friend. La ba 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 so what if it does not just go in one week? What will it be doing in your life in one week? <laughs> what will it be doing in your life in one week? Well, if you, if you, if you are supposing it to be there for one week, then speaking in tongues for one week. Say, so I won't even, I will not read, just speak in tongues. You are the one with the fear. So I'm giving you a solution. If you feel that it's unlawful to speak for one week, then continue with your fear. But it tells us here that fear that is not made perfect in love. Hasha. You see, people who have fear are always suspicious. Always suspicious. You are not, a, you are not able to trust. It takes love to trust. You are not able to trust. I don't know those of you whose parents told you, trust no one. <laughs> you know, if your parents say to you, trust no one, then that means including them. Including your parents. I saw one little uh, piece of comedy of a woman who told her daughter, never share egg with someone. <laughs> Do not share your future. So she boiled the egg. And she was about to eat, and mom came and said, Cut for me. And I said, But you said I should not share egg with anyone. The mother said, Listen. But she just said, Do not share egg with anybody. So that your parents will say, Trust no one. And so you come and say, Mom, I really don't trust. That's what I'm not to say. How dare you? Might. I'm your mother. She said, But mom, you said I shouldn't trust anyone. I probably like that. Because they are always suspicious of people. Someone is always after them. But let's, let's look at it. He said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Yeah. Do you know the meaning of edify? It means to charge up. It means to embolden. It means to build up like an edifice. That's a secret to boldness. Go to a corner. Lago. Not, not that tongue we are speaking. Like a, like a, a bike that, that has not able to start. Can't you even say that kind of tongue invites fear? Look at it. That's the kind of sound fear that attracts fear. Because demons respond to sound. That kind of sound, you, it, it brings a demon. How do people that go to this occultic people, that's how they make sound. <laughs> they invite demons. That's what you're doing. Mo, 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 mo. No. Speaking on no tongue. He didn't say, he's he speaking. Have you ever seen one who speaks English like that? You, go, 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 go. <laughs> you speak. What do you do? Say, Bragidos, Procaniva, Yuris, Pocradis, Tofrogema, Lagos, Poledica, Sopradigo, Lagaman, Toko, Baraja, Iso, Livre, Cani, Mesoprido, Yuri, Kaisto, Foriba, Kijalamanda, I eat zero. I eat you off, yeah? You threaten fear. Cha! <laughs> In the Lord. Monta, Kabaya, Cha! Satan. <laughs> you know, don't be afraid. I know like you do that and just run quickly. Child, in Jesus' name, <laughs> you take up. No, no. He won't waste. You know, Satan is the father of lies. He doesn't lie. He is lies. Jesus, when he speaks, he speaks a lie. For he speaks of himself. He is the father of it. You, you know what means the father of something? I mean, you give birth to it. Satan gives birth to lie. He will tell, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just kill. I, I want to kill you now. And don't say, ah, Jesus, Jesus, no. Say, Satan, you can't do me nothing. You can't do me nothing, Satan. Nothing. Jesus said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You can't hurt me. I'm coming after you, Satan. Put up the light and be there. Say, sir, sir, what if? I said, 
Turn up the light and be there. Sister, what if I own my phone light? I said, turn off every light. And wait. Wait for one minute. Five minutes. He would just say, I, 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 I didn't wear my shirt. That's I didn't kill. Satan is a stupid guy. After some minutes, nothing will happen to you. You find that nothing will happen to you. He may just be saying, I'm coming from your back, I'm coming back. Is that foolish and childish? Imagine a, 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 an angel that pet. He has no job. Says, so that your dog that is not so I will follow now? Don't tell me where you follow. Just come. Say so that just come. Come and do it. He can't. All right? Hallelujah. You see that now? So quickly again. Let's run, let's run, let's run, let's run. Oh boy, Philippians 4, 4, 4, 4. I'm just trying to make sure everything sinks right now. Oh, shakabaya. So NIV again. He says, do not, oh boy. Where are you, NIV? Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God. Hallelujah. And the peace of God, which transcends. There is a peace that transcends people. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, we guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Say, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see that? We guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. John 14. John 14, 27. Everybody, quickly. This is big. It says, peace I live with you. <laughs> no fear. No fear. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth. Give I unto you. You see that? Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as what give it, give I unto you. Then it says, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So you have a work to do in this. Let not your heart be troubled. I don't want you to miss the message here. It says, let not your heart be troubled. That means you have, you, meaning you can let your heart be troubled. You can choose not to let it be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. It's a choice you have to make. I refuse to let my heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Let it not. That means don't give it, don't give your mind, the, don't give your heart the chance to be troubled. But you see, you are only as confident as your mindfulness of who is with you and of whose you are. You are only as confident as your mindfulness of who is with you and of whose you are. There's a lot about, about this and mindfulness we are supposed to look into in a moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, you know that already. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So this is part of the Timothy was very who was afraid, a young preacher. All right. So Paul said Timothy, Timothy, God has not given us. The spirit of fear, he has given to us the spirit of power, of love, and of his son's mind, okay? So you know that. Then you have Proverbs 28, verse 1. It says, the wicked run it when no man pursue it, but the righteous are as bold as life. Did you see that? Proverbs 28, quick. I want to read that for a reason. Proverbs 28, verse 1.
Look at it quickly. Verse 1, book of Proverbs 28, you know there's a lot to say today. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is beautiful. The righteous. I am the righteous. I am bold as a lion. Did you see that? The reason number four, why not you should not afraid. I didn't, I didn't mention to you, but you should add it and let's read it. John, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. 17 and 18. 1 John chapter 4 quickly. Oh, glory to God. Seventeen and eighteen quickly. First John four. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Glory to God. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. The perfect love casted out fear because fear had torment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh boy. I need to let you know that, okay? So fear not. When fear comes, deal with it the way I've taught you, right? You know what to do? First Corinthians 14, 4. Speak in other tongues and declare the word of God. So through prayer and the word of God, you subdue fear. All right? Through prayer and the word of God, you subdue fear. Remember that. So, it's going to come. There's something ahead of time now. It's going to come. But when it comes, cast it out. Whatever fear it is, it doesn't matter. Even if it's something you, you did wrong and fear came because of that, it does not matter. Cast it out. And just remind yourself, when the time of this thing comes, there'll be a way out of it. You know, it's no need dying before the time. There's no need. Maybe you did something and you're going to be punished for it. Maybe next time you, you, you want to be, you want to suffer for it from now to next time. No, just live your life. So when next time comes, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. It's true. Now, I'm not, I'm not teaching you to be arrogant. That's not, that's not what I'm trying to say. I don't, I, don't, I don't like arrogance. I don't want people to be arrogant. You did something and they told you that the, the punishment is next year. Enjoy it that time. Because whether you, you refuse to enjoy or not, you still, still pay for it as it were. If, if I'm just going to tell you, um, looking at worst case scenario. But I know God has brought you in life, but we don't even have to be in that position. Because true prayer can change anything. We can overturn judgment in our favor. So don't, I'm just giving you worst case scenario. Reason is, you don't have to suffer tea that time. There are people who say, well, um, this... The reason why I'm not putting every energy to be satisfied is because one of the songs would die. Before you die, enjoy at least. No, they're put like that. Satan has kept them in bondage. They say, my brother, I just said to just, I just stayed where I am. After all this, look at that man. He was so rich and he still died. I just, what's the use? Look at what was not the use of all the things if he still die. So I'll just stay like this till death comes. <laughs> God will judge you. For not putting to work his grace upon your life. For not putting your talents to work, God will judge you for it. So better enjoy your life. Why? You have it now. Okay, because whether you enjoy or not, you still like, so enjoy. <laughs> no, then enjoy no, nonetheless. If after all of it, you still go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I think we are, we are where we should be now. Hebrews chapter 2. <clears throat> Glory to God. Book of Hebrews chapter 2. That's where we ought to be. So I just needed to show you this by the Spirit of God. <laughs> I'm already pumping to be here now. Because it's, it's a good place to be. 
book of Hebrews in chapter 2. Shakila Baba Bobushi. This is a fellowship meeting. <laughs> you know, we are about to read for you now. It's a result of fellowship. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, now it tells you there's something before this. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. Don't, don't get this wrong and don't be distracted. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. All right? Watch it now. To the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. I'll read again. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. What is God telling you? Huh. Mm. Number one, I want you to begin to learn. Therefore tells us, okay, the word therefore tells us that there is something of great importance already said before this point. All right? It tells us that there's something of great importance already said before this point. And what could that be? The entire of chapter 1. The whole of chapter 1. It talked about Jesus. Oh boy. Hebrews chapter 1. Book of Hebrews chapter 1. Oh boy. Come on, let's go. Verse 1. God, who at sundry times, I want you all to learn this. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. By the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Whom he had appointed heir of all things. By whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself poured our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For under which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I'll be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the, bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. All of them. So, in, by God's law, all the angels have been, or have been commanded to worship Jesus. And all angels do worship Jesus. Great. Verse 7. And of the angels he said, Who maketh his angels spirits? And his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the way of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish. But thou remainest, and they, shall, they, they, and they all shall wash old as doth a garment, and as a vestal shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. 
Who are the heirs of salvation? You and me. So God says, all angels are ministry spirits sent for to minister for us. That means they are sent to take our words and act on them. You, you have to understand your value with God. You have to understand how much God values you. But like I said already in, one of our, in several of our meetings, you can increase in value with God. Because I said there's a difference between um, um, how God sees you and who God sees you as. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are they all not ministry spirits sent forth to make up for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Then chapter 2, verse 1 tells us, in light of this, therefore, do you understand that? Because it wasn't written in, 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 in chapters and in verses. So it says, angels are sent to minister to us. All right, Mr. Force, it says, therefore, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the thing which we have heard. So you see, not the things we are hearing now. Of course, that if we, if we have to give the more earnest heed to what we have heard, what about what we're hearing now? Most earnest heed. If it says to us, give the more earnest heed to the things you have heard, it never means saying to that you are hearing now, you give the most. The most to it, but the more to what you've heard. You have to get it. If it's telling you to give the more energy to what you've heard, and the most to what you're hearing now, it tells you there's a reason for that. So, what are God's reasons for telling us? To give so much attention to what we've heard and what we're hearing now. Hush. Listen, God will not, will not waste his words for things that are not important. Understand that. God will not waste his words on things that are not important. Hush. I, I, you know, I, I stayed on this, on this um, chapter, chapter 2, and it was just... Um, um, few verses I took out of it in fellowship. And I just couldn't leave the first part of it. It was just, it was so revelational. The revelation was so much. Or so much revelation is there. There was so much insight. I dissected the entire verse one. Hello. It says, therefore, we ought to give the more, the, the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, such as what we have just read in chapter 1. You say, why? Number one, it says, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Why do we have to give the earnest heed to them? Number one, lest at any time they should sleep. Because you have to ask, why is the Lord asking us to give the more earnest heed to the thing we have heard? It says, it says, lest at any time we should let them sleep. That means, do you know what that means? <laughs> let me tell you what that means. When it says, lest at any time we should let them sleep, it means, lest we let them run, run out as leaking vessels. Truth can leak out. Go ahead. Lest... They run out. That means truth can run out like a leaking vessel. That's why a rema that was so strong last week, today, you are living as though it was never even a rema at all. Why? They leak. Truth does leak. Lest at any time, they should run out as leaking vessels. Hey, are you listening to me? You know what that means actually? We say to, 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 leak, to run out as leaking vessels, it means to lessen in importance. To lessen in value, right? Okay, to lessen or reduce 
Go ahead. Are you, are you writing? To lessen or reduce in effect, okay, in importance and in result. So, a truth can reduce in effect. I know you will know that. I don't need to explain that to you at all. You know that. A truth can reduce in effect. A truth that made you committed some time ago, now you read it again and you are not feeling anything. It reduces in effect. Okay? Less at any time, that truth should lessen or reduce in effect, importance, results. You, you, you read a Bible portion some time ago, something like, um, just looking at, something like, um, the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. And you were stared. Oh, yeah. You know, you were stared. Or you read something like, by long forbearance, the prince persuaded. Soft words broke the bones. Oh, yeah. You were stared. You saw the need to be careful with words. It has so much impact. Soft, a soft tongue. Break at the bone by long forbearing. It's a principle. You were ah, sha, 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 sha. Ha, ya, ya, ya. I used to talk rough, my God. See scripture. It affected you. It made you. It, you thought about it. You, ah, sha, sha, sha. I, I have not been speaking well. That whole day, you were careful. Two days later, someone did something lesser than the other day to you and say, Man, listen, you are, you are a renowned idiot. What? What? <laughs> you say you're a chronic failure. You bastard. What? And then your mind, your, the Holy Ghost tells you, soft tongue. Say, I beg, forget tongue. <laughs> I beg, this guy, the best person. <laughs> what happened? That truth has lessened in effect. Have you ever, have you ever thought how can someone shake under the power and the next is I'm not coming again? Have you ever? I mean, you, someone came, I've seen people come to meeting and then before I said, take it, oh, they were gone crying. <laughs> 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 friends, my father, I will die for that, friend. You know, <laughs> today you come to me and tell me your converse said that Revis is daddy. <laughs> See, the true test of loyalty's time. Time. Let's see if when troubles come, that, that convert will still say, Remy is my daddy and stay. Let's wait if tomorrow they hear rumor about me that 50 women are pregnant for me. <laughs> it will happen if they will be there. So don't come and have you wondered why? I was a guy many years ago that. I, I, I came to my office and I want to talk to him. And he said he's not holy to sit down and talk. <laughs> I gave him a chair. He says, I know. I'm not worthy to sit on the chair and talk to you. I said, okay, what do you want? He said, I would rather kneel down. I said, ah, kneel down for this conversation? Please, he says, I know. Ha, ah, so you are. He let a few weeks later, I want to go and join court. <laughs> on campus. So, uh, Listen, an encounter can weaken in effect with time. Those who saw the acts of God in Egypt, they didn't go to the promised land. When they saw it, they trembled. Oh, God is holy. The Bible tells us they bowed. A few days later, they took stone to stone Moses. <laughs> Truth. And, and a, a visitation. That, I mean, you had a vision the other day. You were shaking. You, 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 know, you, 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 be, you became careful of the anointing. <laughs> Two days later, you ate, you watched TV, you became excited. You forgot. You forgot about it completely. Not to you, are like someone who hasn't seen anything. There are people in the world, secular people, who are very immoral, unholy, anti-Christ in many ways, that were once singers in church. What happened? You know, I was, I was preparing for this meeting and a thought crossed my mind about a certain man of God that we all love whose wife came out after over 20 years. I know you know who I'm talking about. Why? A beautiful woman like that, beautiful man of God 
who became an example of the new creation in, in our present day. After 20 something years, the wife left. She didn't only just leave, spoke against the man of God, her husband, with whom she has children, told the world things about her husband. I, you know, I, I don't know, it just came to my mind earlier. And I said, Lord, this is a man who, who does miracles. What really what was on my mind was not even the fact that woman could do that. That was a big one, of course. But you know what was on my mind? Was how come God couldn't stop the woman from doing that? That was the thought that was on my mind. How come God didn't warn her? If you try, you die. Because she didn't need God to warn her. Why? Because she knows too much. She knows too much not to be warned. She's, she's too aware of the effect of that, of the consequences. One is for, for ignorant people. God's warning is for ignorant people. Go and read your Bible. It's for, it's for the ignorant. God warned Abimelech in it because he was ignorant. There are those of you who think what you are doing because God has not warned you is right. No, because he expects that you should know. You already know that it's wrong. You know it's wrong. You think God will warn you. He will not warn you. Judgment will correct you. It should be late. Why would God warn you? God's warning is for the ignorant. You don't need God to warn you that this thing you're doing is wrong. You know it's wrong. Now, what, what do you mean by warning? Imagine you say, uh, your mother didn't warn you from taking, for dipping your hand inside the fire. You know it's fire. So you don't need warning to not dip your hand into it. So the Lord spoke to me and said, she, you know, when some of those pastors stood up against me, and I asked them, why didn't you warn them? He said, why would I warn them? Because they knew what they were doing. It's not like they, were, they were not led of the devil. They were not ignorant. So it's when you are being led of the devil to do something that God will warn you that this path the Satan, Satan is taking you through is dangerous. But when it's not the devil, it's, 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 it's a voluntary act. God won't warn you. God won't warn you. Because many times we just expect God to hold us not to sin against like the head of Abimelech. Because Abimelech did it in ignorance. Why would God hold you back from sin when you know he's sin? Abimelech didn't know it was sin because this was a man's wife. He didn't know. So God held him back. So don't say God who held Abimelech held me back. <laughs> Are you Abimelech? No. Do you know Abimelech did it in ignorance? You know what you're doing. Why will God hold you back? If you're going into a pit and you didn't know it's a pit, God will hold you back. Not like they told you there's a pit, they say, I, I, God will hold me back. <laughs> no, no, that doesn't work like that. All right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, I hope you're getting what I'm saying. That, that a truth can lessen the effect in importance. All right? So God says, to avoid that, give the more earnest heed. What do you mean by give the more earnest heed? It means be mindful always. Be mindful always. Do you understand? That's what God is saying. Because we, we, we need to look at something here, okay? Let's just go. Make up your notes and follow me. Hallelujah. You have to understand that this is a great responsibility, okay? Committed to your trust to see that truth does not lessen in effect. It's a huge one. It's a huge one. It's your responsibility. So what do I do? He says, 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 give the more earnest heed. Give the more earnest heed. Hallelujah. That means don't be careless with the place of truth in your life. Don't be careless with the place of truth in your life. Give truth a special place in your life. Solomon said, let them not depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your eyes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Okay, quickly. Number two, right? Why? Because the first one is, why is God saying we should give the energy to it? And I think number one is to, is to, is to see that Truth does not lessen in effect. Number two, 
why I'm giving you the reason why we must give the, the more earnest heed to the things we have heard and the one we're hearing now. Number two, it is because, oh boy, this is so big. It is because in the plan of God, please take note of this. It is because in the plan of God, Every word from him is designed to create your reality. Please, it's so big, it's so big, it's so huge. It is because in the plan of God, every word from God is designed to create your reality. Are you listening to me? That's not just all. Which succeeding generations should meet and learn the way of God? Which succeeding generations should meet and learn of God from it? Which succeeding generations should meet and learn of God from it? Did you see that? You have to remember that continuity is God's idea. Oh boy. Listen. I want to hear this very carefully. The reason I just gave you that um, um, every word of God from you ought to create your reality for sustaining generation to learn from, right? And this is what you should write as an attached part of that statement. This is God's method of raising righteous generations. Oh, there's so much we, we, we will be learning from this. This is God's method of raising righteous generations. Psalms 14. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalms 14, everybody. Verse 5. It says, there were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Psalms 14.5. There's something you need to see here. There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. That tells you something. God is not in every generation. God is not in every generation. So you have a responsibility of keeping God in every generation. And how do we do that? By giving the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, employing them to form a reality. So that the children to come 
will meet them. Learn God from them. You see, one of the ways to to earn God's special commitment is by raising your children after God. Read about Abraham. God said, I know Abraham that he will instruct, he will teach his house after God. Parents who, who fail to raise their children in the way of the Lord will suffer terribly in the hand of God. They will suffer. Parents who, who didn't see the need to raise children after God. Just, just wait for the day to come. You're a parent listening to me, and you don't mind your children living wayward, living the world's way, living, living contrary to God's plan. You will face a very serious judgment in God's hand. You know what? You know why you face judgment? Because you drove God out of their generation. In refusing to train them in the word of the Lord, you drove God out of their generation. And that's what we face today. We are parents driving God out of the generation to come. They fight their children when they go to church. They approve of their children when they practice a life that's not after God. If you are a parent listening to me right now and you're fighting with your child who is serving God for whatever reason you have, I advise you desist from that practice. Instead, encourage your child in the will of the Lord. Someone's mother devoted somewhere to God. Turn your children to God lest you end up like Eli and his household. And you know, God is not in many generations. He wants to be the center of every generation. It's the plan of God. It's the plan of God. To be in every generation. It's the plan of God. But of course, many of you don't know about that. Let me show you how to prove that. That it's God's plan to be in every generation. Hallelujah, glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Take your offerings, your tithe, your first fruits, your ministry's body, just take all of them. And I ask that the Lord will honor them also. Honor them and let the breath of God rest on them too. Let God hear your prayers. Let God respond swiftly to your offerings, your seeds, your tithes, your first for your mistress budget. Let God honor you. May the Lord promote you, increase and enlarge you. May the Lord confirm your life. May the Lord confirm your offerings, your seeds, your tithes, and all that you give with signs and wonders. May God approve all of them with signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to mean this prayer. Just say with me right now. Oh, Lord God. I believe all of the claims of your word. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ was offered for my offenses. He died and was raised again to life for my justification. Today, I declare Jesus Christ is Lord. And I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life for my spirit. And by faith in you and in your word, I receive the remission for all my sins. I receive eternal life for my spirit. I declare 
this day I am born again. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I declare God as my Father. Father God, I thank you. And I ask you to come place your seal of ownership over me. I ask for the Holy Spirit of promise. And in Jesus' name, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thank you, my Father. Today, I become a citizen of heaven and a member of the family of God. Father, come take your place in my life. The name of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, I just want you to, re- to, to open up yourself right now for the Holy Spirit to do a work in your life. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. For the rest of you in the meeting, I want you to join me to speak in other tongues for 60 seconds for those that have just received the Holy Spirit. And those that have just received the Holy Spirit right now, open your mouth and pray because you have just been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Hey, Lord, go say, the rest of us speak in our tongues. Come and take your place, O oh Lord, in my life. Come and take, glory to God, your place, yes, Lord, in my life. Come and take. Yeah, please. The amount of meditation you give to the world to that degree shall virtue be dead back to you. By the Spirit of God, I'm beginning to see that or realize now that there's the need to give ourselves to the not just to um to truth to come, but the present truth. Like Peter said, he said, I'm writing to you. Even though you know them and you're already established in the present truth, I'm still writing to you. So if I'm established in the present truth, why are you writing back to me? Why are you reminding me of it? So that I can give myself wholly to it. Paul said, Timothy, till I come, give yourself to doctrine. Give yourself to exhortation. Give yourself to the message. Give yourself to all I've told you. He said, give yourself wholly to these things. Give yourself wholly to these things. Meditate upon them. Meditate until your profiting, who, who, glory, until your profiting appear to all. There is what we must make known to others. There's what people must see from our lives. The glory must arise. But for that to happen, we must plunge ourselves into the truth which God has given to us. He says, Give yourself wholly to these things, not partially, not occasionally. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear to all. He says, give hope. Oh what he's telling us is this. If you will give yourself wholly to the truth, you are only going to return with the testimony. He says, give yourself wholly to these things that your profiting may appear to all. Because the more you meditate, that truth that God has impacted you with dunamis, the more you think it, the more you are challenged, the more you are stirred up. Because as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So as you meditate that I have been given the spirit of dynamis, suddenly on your inside, you are stirred to burst in tongues. He says, stir up. We don't only step to speaking in tongues. We can step to meditation. You can step a gift to meditation. Not only just by praying in tongues. You can so ponder, ponder, ponder. You are charged on your inside. Then I've got dynamis on my inside. And then to begin to speak in tongues, it starts to flow.